Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, aka IV Crazy, and this is How to Be Successful in FPV, Part 4, the antenna system. More than any other component, the antennas are going to make the greatest impact on your video piloting experience. So choose them wisely. What do you choose? Well, the third, first thing you need to choose is polarization. There are two types of polarization, circular and linear. Linear polarization is what you most often see in most systems around the world. It's just a straight up and down whip, such as this, very simple and very basic. There's a problem with linear polarization. A reflected signal will still enter the antenna. So when your receiver is listening for that signal, it might get the, get the echo that echoed off that tree or off this building behind you. So even though my airplane might be way out there listening to the signal, it might have a bounce signal that's slightly delayed off something behind me and still enters that, an that linear antenna. If you use a directional antenna, it takes care of part of that problem. However, you can use a different style of polarization, circular polarization. The great thing about circular polarization is the wave, instead of being running like this, it now runs as a spiral. The interesting thing about a spiral wave, when it hits an object, it reverses direction and comes back out. So in the case of an antenna generating that spiral, you've got this spiral system coming out. If it reflects off of something, I can't get into this circular polarized helical antenna. It'll only wind one direction. So reflected signals automatically get knocked out. So circular polarization will keep your video from mixing. If you have a problem with your video scrambling all over the place, that's probably multipath interference and it might be time to change the circular polarization. So now we've gone over the difference between linear and circular polarization. What type of antennas do I use? Well, if you're going with circular, these are the original, the blue beams. Circular polarized transmitter antenna, circular polarized receiver antenna. There are many flavors out there. This is known as a clover leaf with three lobes, a skew planer wheel with four lobes, or the IB Crazy Mad Mushroom with five lobes. Well, what's the difference? Well, typically the clover leaf has been historically used as a transmit antenna, but the Mad Mushroom works fine as well. The skew planer wheel has been historically used as a receiver antenna. Does it work as a transmitter antenna? Of course it does. Does a clover leaf work as a receiver antenna? Of course, it's just convention. But typically most people have had success with the clover leaf and the skew wheel. The Mad Mushroom will be released in a few months, so keep an eye out for that one. It's an improvement on this little guy here. So what kind of range can you get out of these? Well, it depends on your system. But the nice, the thing is, is most pilots do not fly behind themselves. They typically set up and there's their field out there. So for that, you might want a directional antenna. Well, now it gets a little bit different. You're still using your omnidirectional antenna on your airplane, but now you want a little bit of directionality. You want your antenna to look out that way. Why? Well, if your antenna is listening behind you, it can't listen as well in front of you. This is where the concept of gain comes in. So the higher the gain, the more directional the antenna. So we'll start with a very, very low gain antenna that's directional, such as the helical antenna. This is a circularly polarized antenna. It is listening in about 145 degree beam. So anywhere between my two arms, it listens just as well or stronger than the Omni antenna. Does that mean I can't fly behind myself? Of course not. You can fly behind yourself, just don't go very far. The great thing about a, uh, about a directional antenna is not only does it allow you to fly further away, but your video clarity is going to be better when right out in front, and it also gives you that added punch to punch through buildings, you know, and trees and other objects. This antenna, this is a 1.3 gigahertz helical, but let's say you go up to 5.8 gigahertz. Well, now the helical is nice and tiny, very small. It's the same antenna. The only difference is this is a higher frequency, so the antenna gets smaller. Well, let's say you want slightly higher gain. Well, there's a five turn helical with more turns, so let's say you want a little bit more range than the helical offers. Well, for that, there's the crosshair. The crosshair was developed as a joint effort between me and Hugo of True RC Canada. 
We developed this specifically for FPV. Great axial ratio, which means it rotates a signal very well and it has the ability to punch through all kinds of objects. Keep an eye out for this one. This one will come in different arrays with th two or even four stacked against each other that'll be able to punch through mountains a mile away. Now again, if you're a beginner, don't try it. This antenna is more an advanced pilot's antenna. You know, you're not able to fly nearly as far behind this antenna as you would say a helical. Can you fly behind it? Sure. Again, not as far. What's the beam width of it? Beam width is about 120 degrees, so a little bit narrower. The helical's out here, the crosshair's in here. Again, that's where the beam is as strong, if not stronger, than your Omni antenna. Again, you can fly to the sides, just don't go far. Well, that's circular polarization. What about linear? For linear polarization, there are three common antennas out there. The patch, the Yagi, and the Biquad. The patch, the 8 dBi patch, is the linear equivalent of this helical antenna. All it is, linearly polarized. Many people do great with a stock antenna and an 8 dBi patch. It works great. They go up to 14 dBi for much, much longer range. Again, 14 dBi, highly directional. If you're, if you're a beginner, you do not want high gain. Stick with something around seven, eight, you know, no more than 10, absolutely not. Another antenna is the Yagi. The Yagi's come in all different sizes, higher gains, and they can reach out there further. The problem with the Yagi's is they tend to have some issues with multipath interference. But if you're going for long range, Yagi's work great. And then of course, there's the Biquad. The Biquad antenna is great. There's no side lobes, but there's a little bit of a lobe here to the sides and a little bit to the rear, so you can fly behind it into the sides of it fairly well, but your beam out front is about 90 degrees, so about right here. It's linearly polarized, so your capability, so you want to fly a linear antenna with it. So which antenna is right for you? How far can I go? Well, this is a results me very hobby, and you might want to get used to that. So make sure that you know that what one person can do with a certain setup doesn't mean that you're gonna do the same. You might do better than they will, or not as, not as well. It all depends. Really, it's experimentation. Honestly, an Omni antenna set works great for most people. So does a helical. So does a crosshair, even a biquad. It just depends on your mission. If you're, are you going for long range, or are you looking to keep it in close and just fly around yourself? Make this decision, choose it wisely. The great thing about the antenna, it's probably the cheapest part of the video system and it's real easy to change it out for another system. There's nothing to it. So the choice is up to you. Me personally, I fly this helical sometimes. Sometimes I fly a crosshair on the ground station. Other times I just like to slap this on my head and have a good time. The choice is up to you. Remember the distance between 20 miles and two miles around the park is all in the receiver antenna. What polarization should you choose? I recommend circular, but a lot of pilots out there fly linear and have a lot of fun with it. So generally circular is more popular because it's easier to use, but that doesn't mean linear is obsolete. It still works great. And that's how I started out. This has been an IB Crazy tutorial. Keep your wings in the sky.